I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for different organic transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. I really like this reaction for a few different reasons. Number one, it's actually an example of a very simple and traditional organic chemistry mechanism known as electrophilic aromatic substitution. And what's more is that it looks pretty complicated because we're taking benzene, introducing this furan derivative, and generating a cyclic fused ring system, and we're also what appears to be extending the carbon chains because this is a five-membered ring, and in our product, we're generating a six-membered ring. However, if you do a careful inspection, what you'll notice is that all that's really happening is one, two, three, four of these carbons are added on this side, and the two carbons that make it a six-membered ring actually are already a part of our benzene. So diving into the mechanism, remember that in electrophilic aromatic substitution, we can do things like substitute different positions on benzene by first generating a really potent electrophile. And some classic examples of that would be chlorination using a Lewis acid catalyst or bromination using a Lewis acid catalyst. And in this reaction, we're also needing to pre-generate a really potent electrophile. And we can achieve that by protonating the oxygen on this molecule because because remember we have an acid. So this is effectively H plus because H2SO4 or, or sulfuric acid reacts with water. This generates hydronium ions, which you can just consider to be some sort of acid. And this protonation can occur where you're protonating that oxygen position, and that's actually what serves to make it the really potent electrophile. Because once you protonate this oxygen, you're making it positively charged, and then therefore what you're doing is you're making the neighboring or adjacent carbons much more electrophilic and susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So in that first step, that's what will happen, is we'll come and do our electrophilic aromatic substitution by attacking this carbon chain, which has been made more electrophilic by protonating this oxygen. And that's going to actually open this ring and give us our neutral alcohol at the end of that chain. So then the product of this reaction is going to be where we have generated what's known as an arenium ion, where we have a positive charge at the carbon position where we lost that pi bond because we did our electrophilic aromatic substitution at this carbon. And remember we attached to this carbon is where we're forming our new covalent bond. So that's where these dimethyl groups go. And then we're one, two, three carbons over, one, two, three carbons over from where the next dimethyl group is. And rather than being closed currently, like in our final product, this is just gonna be an OH group or an alcohol. And remember, when we did our protonation, we generated the conjugate base. And what that means is that what can happen, just like in most electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, is that that conjugate base, or water for example, can come down and deprotonate this hydrogen, which will bring down these electrons to reform our aromatic ring. And from here, we've regenerated benzene, and we've also regenerated our acid. And that's gonna be key here because what's gonna happen next is that that alcohol that we have at this position here, where we have the dimethyl groups and our OH group, since we've regenerated the acid in that step, is actually gonna come and reprotonate that alcohol position. So we can protonate this position, which will give us a new intermediate in which we'll be generating a new highly active electrophile. So we've regenerated this benzene ring, and then we've also protonated that alcohol. And in doing so, we've made this oxygen positively charged, which again makes this carbon a more potent electrophile. So we can do another example of an electrophilic aromatic substitution, where now these pi electrons can come and attack this position. This will kick off water as our great leaving group, and that is gonna give us another arenium ion. So what we've done now is that we've re-aromatized previously, but now since we made a new carbon to carbon bond at this position, that means that we have left behind a positive charge at this position, which again is resonance stabilized, just like in other electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. And then we still have this hydrogen located here, which will again undergo another deprotonation, probably from the conjugate base that was formed when we protonated our alcohol, kicking down these electrons, re-aromatizing, and actually serving to give us 
our final product. So I know that this reaction initially began as looking pretty complicated, but if you follow the steps that you've learned about previously in traditional organic chemistry classes, you'll see that it's not that complicated. Remember, we had an oxygen that had lone pairs, we introduced an acid, and that's a very common example of where proton transfers can occur. This generates an activated electrophile that can undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution to make a new carbon to carbon bond on benzene. This generated a resonance stabilized arenium ion, which can be deprotonated by the conjugate base to reform our aromatic substance. And then a subsequent proton transfer generates another highly activated electrophile, which can undergo a subsequent electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, again generating a resonance stabilized arenium ion. And then deprotonation serves to re aromatize that ring. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.